Dear students, let us start the discussion on today's newspaper that is 22nd August 2016. The first article is related to improvement in parliamentary functioning. So in this context, uh, let us understand about two related phenomena, the nature of voting in the parliament and the anti-defection law. Most of the bills in parliament are passed through voice vote. What is meant by this? Where the chair of the house, uh, he asks the people to support a particular bill or oppose that. Based on his perception, that he, in, he makes a decision that the bill is passed or not passed. It means, how many voices in support are or in opposition to it? There is no fixed guarantee number which exhibited in the, which is exhibited in the voice vote just by perception of the house perception of the chair it has been concluded but on the other hand for the constitutional amendment bills in the place of the voice vote a recorded vote is taken up an entire electronic system for the recorded vote is been set up in the parliament because of the voice vote it is not clear that which MP is voting for what and what is its stand on various issues. So in this scenario, the article recommends why can't the parliament shift itself to the recorded vote on every bill and it helps the people to know what is the stand of their MP on various issues. So it makes el the electorate to question their representative why he has behaved in such a way. Then obviously it keeps him uh, on toes or uh, builds the pressure onto him to raise the same issue on the intra-party meetings. So because of this, from grassroots levels, the debate gets strengthened. And second is, the freedom of the MPs is very much necessary. The freedom of speech, it provides them to articulate their views and opinions and makes them relevant in the case of the House. If not, they are just made to follow the instructions of the High Command on the floor of the House. The anti-defection law which can disqualify a member if you do not follow the whip of the political party is a major limitation for the freedom of speech and expression of the member of the parliament on the floor of the house. So along with this voice vote and anti-defection law, the members of parliament are becoming irrelevant on the floor of the house and their voice is being decided by the high command politics in the political party. So if the democracy has to be strengthened, the, we shall shift to the recorded votes and, and we need to rethink about the anti-defection law in our constitution. Now coming to the Syria's tragedy and the West Asia at large. The first point is there is a cold war which is going on between Saudi Arabia and Iran. So Iran supports the Shia faction and Saudi Arabia supports the Sunni faction. If you take Syria, Mr. Assad is supported by the Iran and the rebels, they are supported by the Saudi Arabia. And added to that, ISIS has grew over there. And along with this, so the Kurds, the minority, they are also fighting from the North Shores. So in all this, the Russia and United States, they are also involved in the great game. This has led to the loss of 400,000 people and still the war is continuing. In the near side, there is no chance of a ceasefire agreement. The two children, one of the child who, is, who was found dead on the Turkey's shores, and recently Mr. Omran Daknish, who was found on, uh, who was recovered from the debris of a collapsed building in near uh, Aleppo. So this shows that the worstness of this particular uh, humanitarian crisis. And the people crossing the Mediterranean Sea, many of them have died. So it is the time the world has to think over it. Now another ground is in Yemen. So if you see over here, the Houthi rebels, the Houthis, these are the Shia faction. They are supported by Iran indirectly. And the government of Al-Hadi, it is supported by the Saudi Arabia, who is a Sunni. And Abu Saleh, who was the president previously, who was overthrown by the Houthis, later he was overthrown by the Al-Hadi. Now he has come in support of the Houthis. So now Houthis plus Abu Saleh, they are on one side. And most of the Yemen military is in support of them. And then the president, existing president Al-Hadi, he is getting the support from Saudi Arabia and Dubai. That is UAE. So in this scenario, 
Uh, Saudi has started the air rights, um, and but it failed to achieve any of its uh, strategic goals. Um. Now, why is it still continuing, and why the international community is not responding to it? Um. Now, Saudi it don't want to leave. It's a spear of influence in Yemen because already it lost it in Iraq, and now it is not ready to lose it in Yemen. Because of this, of chaos which has been created due to statelessness, Al Qaeda is growing over there. Al Qaeda in Yemen is a strong faction now. And the second is, the violence also entered into the Saudi border now. And the third thing, the Saudi Arabia being the largest importer of the weapons from the West, especially USA, and Iran nuclear deal has significantly irritated the Saudi Arabia. and shifted the strategic balance united states is not ready to push the saudi arabia to the wall further so in this scenario the saudi arabia's attack on amen it was ignored by the major power so in this way in the greater global politic and also in the cold war between saudi arabia and iran the humanity is suffering the third one is challenges before the urjit patel you know that urjit patel is newly appointed as the governor of rbi so now what he has to face the inflation targeting has become an established rule for the monetary policy so it was stabilized by raghuram rajan sir so in these circumstances what the urjit has to do he has to continue the legacy as prime minister already announced the 4% of the targeted inflation then the task before him is um, um, great um, i mean huge so in this scenario inflation targeting will continue and the second thing is the monetary policy committee was constituted but uh, its institutionalization is in the hands of the urjit patel and the transmission of the monetary policy benefits um, from the bankers to the people to the industry is not properly happening streamlining this entire process to facilitate the growth is another challenge not but not least the banks clearing the balance sheets of the banks so the stress asset review which has started by raghuram rajan need to be finished and the growth agenda and the growth role of the banks need to be restarted so these are all the challenges before mr urjit now the niti ayog has given its uh, concept paper on the electronic policy for to um, give a momentum to make in india so it says that any investments greater than 1 billion shall receive 10 years of the tax holiday and added to that the sector has to focus on export market which is worth of 2 trillions uh, rather than just focusing on the indian market uh, which was around 66 billion as of now so this is what is spoken by the niti ayog coming to punjab you know that chandigarh is a contentious issue between punjab and haryana either you take rajiv gandhi longwala accord so the major one of major point between the center and the punjabi is the status of the chandigarh whenever the elections comes up the river water distribution and the chandigarh issue always a point of focus now mr badal he has raised the issue of satlaj emuna link canal and now the opposition mr amarinder singh congress it is raising the issue of the chandigarh so that's how the i mean politics are trying to ignite the emotions among the people so these are the articles for today thank you very much all the best